Hello and welcome to the podium which is coming to you live from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation with me as me but we start with a uh, quote of the day which comes from Magnus um, Karen, an American author of young adult fiction and it says people like to think they are open-minded but if you um, toss a third gender stereotype on their path they will run with it every time. Coming up into the section of the program, Parliament ends debate on the 2023 budget what are the highs and lows of the budget? We shall find out from the opposition and ruling party members of parliament. Mobile operators increased their campaign on the need to review the current tariff, but some citizens and civil society members say the move is untimely. Data from Rainbow Initiative show that there is surge in sexual and gender-based violence. All these stories and more, including your text messages, which you can send to 0883735048. The number again is 0883735048. It's podium. The number you can send your text messages is 0883735048. You can also send us a message on our Facebook page, SLBC TV channel 31. At a stakeholders engagement meeting held at the Country Lodge Hill Station, the mobile operators, including Africel and Oranja, presented a report on the current expenditures and the impacts of global inflation on their operations. So the companies claim that since 2017, when the tariff was reviewed and five years on, they have been constrained with uh, the many costs uh, in the operations, especially the increase in foreign exchange rate um, and also increase in pump price in the country. However, citizens uh, think that such an increase is untimely looking at current economic challenge forcing the people, especially at a time when um, the country's economy is not performing as many citizens expect. Well, for further insight into this, I have in the studio John Conte, who is the media relations manager of Africel and later we are expecting to talk to a civil society member who is against the um, idea proposed by the mobile companies. Let me start with um, John Conte on the program. Thank you very much, Asmu. Okay. I see the uh, mobile operators are uh, all over the place um, expressing their own reasons or profiling their own, their own reasons why they want to review the 2017 tariff. Uh, are you guys making progress in convincing the public and other stakeholders I mean, well, this is not about convincing the public or stakeholders. This is about presenting the reality. This is about helping people understand what is happening in the industry. This is about helping consumers understand um, that we are, we, we are constrained. This is helping um, the National Telecommunications Authority understand that um, it's the, a, a review and normalization of the tariff phase is long overdue. Um, this is putting, a, uh, putting the, the cost of tariff against every other commodity. This is putting the putting cost of tariff against even entertainment. I can tell you, uh, ask me that um, since 2017, when the uh, tariff was reviewed, everything else, everything else has increased. The price of every other commodity has increased but tariff. Now, so what we're basically asking for is a normalization of the tariff. What is the normalization? What do you mean? Because it is about bringing the cost of the tariff against whatever inflation we are experiencing at the moment. Inflation is over 25%, close to 30-33% at the moment. Fuel price increased from 6,000 leons in 2017. It's 21,000 now. And as, 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 as MNOs, we pay, we pay um, bulk price, which is 25,000. So that means there's 300% there's increase in the price of fuel as against uh, um, stagnated, stunted tariff uh, price for, for the past five years. So we are basically saying, let's normalize, let's bring it to a point where um, if, even, even though it might not be uh, you know, adequately enough to uh, uh, offset whatever cost there, there might be, or maybe in terms of operations, but it would, we would meet at the point where uh, the, the, the companies would not be uh, bleeding, which well, is I mean, basically happening. Changing the tribe or increasing the tribe is not the only way you can get the balance that you are looking for. I mean, that's that's the most significant. What is what is our basic operation? What do we do as a as a phone company? What do we do as as MNOs? We sell airtime, so it's the basic, it's the crux of our operations. That is basic. What we do, we make money by selling airtime. So if 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 the if the tariff is 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 at a point where it needs reviewing. We're basically just asking for that, that let's look at, a, at the cost and let's review that. When you say review, how many percent are you asking for or do you want not come to allow you to increase the tariff? So a lot of, a lot of um, lobbying, a lot of all the engagements are ongoing with, with, with NATCOM. 
uh, NATCA at the moment, um, based on the 2022 Act. Uh, it is the, the, the commission is now being transformed to, to an authority. So uh, we're saying they have the, the, um, the legal right to state whatever the cost should be on tariff. We have tabled uh, some suggestions I would not like to mention because whatever I do as far as that cost is concerned, it would mean um, I'm, I'm issuing a statement no, but, not, the but, I mean, you, but we are looking at... The, the public may want to know the proposal that you, we, the we are, we are the looking, companies have presented. To are you asking, for example, for 100% increment, 50%? 25%? So what we would do is we would leave v v that specific information with the National Telecommunications well, Authority. What are presented to not to, to, uh, uh, So in the joint community, in the, in the um, public par partnership, public-private pr dialogue that we had, if, if, if an amount or a figure wasn't presented, what we presented was a case justifying the need for a review. It wasn't a cost attached to it we said to not come based on what you've seen that we have showed as far as the cost of our operations against the inflation that we're experiencing uh, cost of, of tariff against the rising pump price we, we, we're kindly asking for the commission for the authority to review that and give us something that is appreciable I mean but you guys must this, have had something in mind of course we do 25% increments so I don't like I said I uh, permit me I am not, I'm not running away from the question, but I'd rather let the authority uh, task with the responsibility of announcing what the price should be to make that announcement. Okay. I mean, it, it, it is not unanimous. I mean, one of the other mobile companies uh, is, is saying that increase in, in, in tariff is not the solution to what you're asking for. I, I don't... They hold a different view. I, well, we, we, all the MNOs were there, and, and did, that was a communique signed by all the MNOs. No, but I mean, you're not, okay, well, I mean... Let me disclose it now. I mean, the other day, QSEL was on, on, on morning coffee, and they were uh, at variance um, concerning what you guys were asking for. So it's... Uh, are you it's not speaking uh, with one voice? Of course, we are speaking as, as a sector. We are speaking as an industry. If... if, if I, 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 don't, I don't want to make a case on their behalf. I don't want to make a case on, on, or an arg argument against what they, what they have tabled. But as far as the majority of the sector is concerned, um, um, we, are, we are requesting a normalization of the tariff. But have you also thought of the prevailing economic situation in the country? I mean, things are very hard. You can imagine, I mean, less than a fortnight ago, I mean, the fuel pump price was increased. And um, yeah, I know what uh, one million old loans did six months ago is now what that's one million. So let me, let, me, let, me tell, let me tell you. Have um, you also thought of that, I mean, the effect that it will have. So do you think that when mass. you think that when pump prices increase, it doesn't affect us as telcos? It does. If you were buying 250 liters at 10,000, we were buying higher than that. But let's let's have that at yeah, 10,000. Yeah, big multinational companies. Of course. Mm -hmm. So that means the the more you have, the more you pay on taxes, the more expenses you have, the more operational costs you have, the, the more, more capital, well. cap, the more capital against against inflation, against inflation. So let me let me mention there are a few sites, there are a few figures that I've seen. I can tell you there are sites that would really not make you any profit as far as calls from and to that site is concerned. It would cost you more to have it on to maintain the site and to keep communication in a particular lo um, lo location. So, what would you want to keep that site on or have it off and save your cost on running that site and transfer that to another location? Your cost in other areas. Take for example, I mean, people say some of the, the, the I mean, uh, mobile operators normally use this CSR, corporate social responsibility, under that guys, and they disburse this. I mean, spend lots of money out there. People say you can cut some of those costs. So that is basically you're spend, maybe your spending is so high. So that is basically what's happening. Mm -hmm. We are not cutting. We have to give back to the. Uh, where we are operating, and that is done through CSR. Now, but at the 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 rate at the rates the company the companies are bleeding at the moment, we would have to have a review of that. We would have to look at that and say, can we continue with uh, the magnitude of CSR we do every year? Can we continue with the magnitude of support we've been giving to uh, respective or various industries, entertainment we've been giving to education we've been giving to you you name it can we continue with that that is that would be something you would review as well to look at at this current rate no are you guys not whipping up sentiments D listen whatever happens mm -hmm. n if a decision is made i would tell you before we had the increase in the price of fuel 
it was rumored and people complained there were huge price there were in civil society organizations the general public media everyone complained but then when PRA wanted to do the price increase they go ahead and announce you make adjustments it is the same thing we are moving along the same direction we are asking you we just want a normalization of the tariff that is why we're engaging it is about letting people know that this is happening it's going to happen and we are looking forward to it happening okay. we have asked the commission we have asked the authority to help us with that this issue of normalization you and i know that um the, the, the pump price or the foreign exchange is not stable maybe another one two months from now maybe something happen. um it, so in so at any time the pump price increases at any time the exchange rates um, the Leon devalues and the dollar values you want have we done that in the past no, I'm asking five. Is, is that is that kind of argument you ask have we done that in the past five years no, I'm asking is that what is that what and I'm, I'm responding is that a new arrangement now you want so based on what the com based on anything? communicator was signed based on the communicator was signed whatever happens that would not be a price review or a tariff review within the next six months if our case for normalization is approved there would not be a tariff review whatever happens in the next six months. But it's been five years, we haven't done that. Bond prices increased. It's been 300% increase, ask me you. And there hasn't been one review or increase of telecommunications tariff, be it data or voice. Okay. Continue to be with us. Uh, he is uh, John Conte, who is uh, the Media Relations Manager of Africelis Podium. Coming to you from the Siri Broadcasting Corporation with me as uh, Let's go to another issue. Our Parliament has on Friday completed debate on the 2023 budget, uh, which was presented by the Minister of Finance on the 11th of November 2022, where the bill seeks to authorize expenditure from the Consolidated Fund for the services of the country for a whole year. Well, two days into the budget debate, the main opposition party uh, did boycott, but the last three days saw them participate in the debate. Um, also, uh, members uh, from the governing party referred to the 2023 budget as one that secures uh, um, for the vulnerable. While the opposition party says uh, the budget is not much to write home about, citing the current economic uh, climate in the country, but the bill has been committed to the Committee of Supply and Further Scrutiny, and this is a crucial stage as it discusses allocations to MDAs, especially priority areas of the government uh, midterm national development plan. Well, for more on that, we have in the studio Honorable uh, Mustafa Mselu of Constituency 095. We are also expecting someone from the All People's Congress uh, to join us, a member of parliament from the side of the APC. Let me start with you, uh, Honorable uh, Mustafa Mselu. Welcome to the podium. <coughs> Thank you very much, Esther. What do you say? Okay. Um, like previous uh, budget debates, much did not change. Normally, um, since I became a journalist, I have been following budget debates in Parliament. Whenever um, a finance minister presents the budget, the ruling party will defend, the opposition party will pick holes. That is a normal tradition in Sierra Leone. And I'm sure you agree with me that that did not change this year as well. Did it change? Well, um, to a large extent, it did not, but um, because probably that is how people, some opposition members, see the budget. Because the budget is not a SRPP budget; it's a budget for the entire nation, and it's a budget that caters for the affairs of the citizens of this nation. Yeah, we did not prepare this and not present the budget to Parliament to say it's going to support SRPP members. It's going to support Sierra Leoneans across. And if you look at the budget. A huge chunk of this budget, 22% of this, is um, to service the education sector, which is a very key um, issue that we have to discuss this afternoon. And the team of this, of this budget is addressing the needs of the vulnerable in the context of multiple crises. You agree with me, you and I know the crisis we are going to right now from the COVID-19, the entire world was battling with COVID-19. We have the Ukraine-Russia war, all of these are issues that uh, the entire world is, is battling with. It's not just specific to Sierra Leone. But as a nation, I used, I used to say, even when we are on 98th Monday with a honorable government colleague, it, the disasters or natu nat natural disasters are something that we don't control. We don't have control over. The, the, what we have control as a government is how we manage these issues, how we manage disasters, how we manage the shocks. Yeah? The Ukraine issue is man-made, yeah? but it's not by our own volition. 
you know the supply chain has been disrupted for quite a long time even the the for the fuel we are already talking about fuel here even open countries they've cut down the production these are all we are not producing we're not producing oil here so we are basically uh, getting these goods out of out of Sierra Leone yeah so we have all of this outside of our control but what we have what we have done as a government is to how to cushion the effect on the on the citizen so how do you think the 2023 budget will cushion that pressure that effect so that the ordinary man does not well the ordinary man feels it but does not feel it that much um we we you and i will agree that you and i know that uh, in this country um uh, with all these shocks with all this uh pandemic and all the rest of it we not we we have commodity essential commodities in the market and in the history of this country it is this government that has taken direct money into the into people's pocket it has never happened in this country in the midst of covid when you say direct what do you mean um we serviced we serviced um all the the um entertainment industry the hotel workers the um cinema owners these they were paid money directly to your pocket the workers they were paid directly i've never seen that during the ebola we did not see that no but during but, the ebola but, also but, honorable member during, during ebola teacher for example who are one of the highest employers in the country they sat in home because they did not go to school but the then government also paid them their size that is that is that's a different scenario no it's, it's, scenario. It, 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 I mean, it's also, a different it's a different teachers, scenario money is you are put into those, their pockets yeah, those so it's, um, not, it's, it's not we, it's not it's not a novelty now it is it? it is because even for this government we continued paying teachers even when covid uh covid was around we still continued paying teachers and we are records with all with all these crises multiple crises we are still paying salaries on time for this month for november we paid salaries on the 22nd 23rd salary pay across the board We've never renewed our responsibilities. We are we are moving on development projects. That's the what government, government is supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. But a responsible government does that. Mm. But a government that's not responsible will say, okay, because of this, we are cutting down on ABC. But we are still managing the situation, and the people are getting the essential commodity market, and we are pushing the effect. How are we pushing the effect? We reduce tax on uh, basic commodities like rice, oil, sugar, and the rest of it. We've re we've drastically reduced tax on those. But of these commodities you mentioned keep increasing. Um, on a weekly and daily basis well um it has to do and the percentage is also scary take for example something you you bought last week let's say at 10 leons if you go to the market this week you buy it around 12 or 13 leons. it has to do with uh, two things yeah ask me uh take it for me i didn't make the intervention of the government that is in place to cushion this effect probably what you're seeing here we, if if it, the people of this country are not wise enough to have voted this government in to have pushed this effect, we will not be seeing this. Yeah, but let's let's. Uh, it has to do with the individual uh, attitude as well. The business community. We are all serial leaners. You and I know if I buy a bag of rice, uh, import cost everything landed in Sierra Leone two thousand uh, two uh, twenty dollars or thirty dollars as an old stock. The immediately the pressure top. You sell that same old stock at, a, at the current price just to make excess profit and you are not you're not so you are suffering the the, the the general masses the people of this country are suffering mm -hmm. it's about how we deal with ourselves <coughs> so we are pushing the market economy yeah this government is doing the, their best recently we re we released about 500 billion to, to to exporters just to cushion this effect we are trying our best but we cannot say we are going to put our 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 resources in all of that forgetting about the other development sector we have education we have health you have you are you and i know for the past we have never we've never enjoyed the first light in this country but i now this government we can boast of at least 20 21 hours light on the in the city and across the country we've increased energy drastically since our inception these are all issues that uh, we should be looking at and uh, the commodities yes i we are all buying from the same market they are they are a bit expensive yes based on our economy but uh, they are not they are not they are not scarce you go to the market to get them so what we are doing as a government is one a to ensure that the commodities are, are available B, to ensure that uh, we we provide necessary support to the exporters so that uh, they are able to come with these goods. Recently, we the Bank of Sierra Leone uh, uh, issued auction uh, millions of dollars into the into the market. Honorable, let us look at one thing that has uh, that has stretched the budget is the 22 percent that the government uh, is going to pump also in 2020 into the education sector. You agree with me that 22% of a country's budget, that's very huge, that the lion's share of the budget. Uh, some people say that is also one of the reasons um, the economy is in this kind of situation because 22% of the budget you, is being pumped somewhere 
where I don't expect to get something in return in the near future. This, uh, this is just an investment. The government will argue that for the next generation, for the, I mean, those kids who are now in primary school, by the time they end their university, by the time they come to the job markets, 20, 20 50, 20, 25 years from now. Um, when you're in a situation, to be out of a situation, you have to, somebody has to take the lead. The lead, the lead. That is what exactly the, His Excellency, the President, and this government is doing. Uh, we cannot say because we have been in the dark for so for so long. We we'll continue to be there. Education is life, and uh, education is uh, is key. Yeah, the the human development. We have to ensure that uh, we we empower the citizens. It will not will not feel the impact now, like you said. But five, six years, ten years down the line, we we'll start to. Uh, realize the impact of our intervention. If we say yes because uh, education it costs so much, we want to ignore that, then we'll just be around the same area where we are. We need to invest in the, in, in, in the, in the citizens. We, we'll get there. It's time. It's a matter of time. We'll get there. But education is expensive and somebody has to take the lead. Yeah. By the time we are doing, we are doing well in education. We are doing well. You and I know the in, we've increased enrollment, retention rates, um, number of uh, uh, public exam passes, a number of uh, public exam. It has never happened in this country. Uh, 2022 was is one of the best results we've ever produced. So how, how, how many of them got admission to the universities? That that is not a question we are here to discuss. Um, we are here to discuss. Um, no, but that the, should be part of the no, quality no, assessment. No, no yeah, you know, quality assessment. Quality assessment have different variables or indicators, and I I don't think if we want to discuss it at one here. We're just talking about uh, education in passing, but we're talking about the budget and how that impacts the lives of the common civilians. I think that is what we are here to discuss. But, you can't, but I mean, yeah. you, you, can't, yeah. you can't you can't you can't talk about past figures without talking about the quality as well, can't you? We 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 talk about quality. The issue of uh, admission to universities that's a that's a difficult game. The university, you 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 and I know we have limited universities in Sierra Leone. We have limited universities. Yeah, it's just now that we have other universities. We have the EBK. We have uh, we have uh, Unimark. We have other colleges that are around now to absorb this uh, tension. Before that, before the, before now, it was just Jala and the Fabric College, IPA, two three. So, but now we have up to ten or fifteen or more. So at least we we are able to absorb uh, the the students into into the system. That is that is something that we have to applaud the, the government for. It's progressive. It's not just um, SFPP. It's, it's been progressive. Yeah, but we are now we are now ensuring that uh, this has the quality is maintained because that is the point. Quality, quality education is maintained. And for us, it's our flagship program, and we have to treat it like a flagship program. It's our baby. We need to ensure that uh, by the time we leave power, people of this country are enlightened, and enlightened citizens will not take any kind of. Uh, treatment that people want to, politicians will just come and levy on them. When people are enlightened, you don't just treat them for take it for granted. That is what we are pushing. Some other government will not want people to be enlightened. And we are trying to enlighten people. By the time they are enlightened to a certain level, you now you now see the, 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 the progress all of us will make. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Salu, who is representing the Sierra People's Party from Constituency 095. The program is podium coming to you from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. Well, shortly, we shall talk to the Member of Parliament representing the people's family. But before, let me come to you, um, Joseph Sano, one of the civil society members who, um, who is against um, the review of the tribe that the mobile operators are asking for. I mean, you are not here, but John has painted a very convincing picture since 2017 to now. Uh, prices of what they use have sprung up, for example. I mean, pump price, fear price has, has gone up. I mean, the, the, the Leon is depreciating while the dollar is appreciating. And many of the things that they use are paid and bought in dollars. So that's very convincing. They are, they are not running, uh, their businesses are running at loss for now. Don't you think that's a convincing one? Well, um, I want to inform you that we don't have any empirical proof that their businesses are losing. We, we went to Country Lodge. We are informed at night on Thursday on willingly some of us went there. And uh, the discourse was whether there should be a tariff increment or not. And we, the civil society sector was split into two. We vehemently opposed that it should not be, not even now. The media, we are unanimous that no, it should not be now. Hmm. 
So, um, but they still continue to say they want it. And what, from what I'm seeing... Why do you think it should not be now? No, from what I'm seeing, when we discuss with another, another MNO, they are not prepared for increments. So why not now? Um, firstly, he has given you the convincing story that they are buying in dollars. Of course, yes, they are buying dollars. Of course, he said also the prices of things have increased. Of course, yes, prices of things have increased. But let me tell you about the telecom industry. And when I'm speaking to you about the telecom industry, I am not a novice in the telecom industry. I have worked in the telecom industry for over the past 10 or 15 years. I have, um, uh, besides that, even my, my master's in, in, in telecom management. So I am not talking as if I do. It is where I came from. Firstly, I want to inform you that the telecom industry is not losing. And the, the property they are claiming to buy, you don't buy the gadget year in, year out. You buy the gadget like five, ten years. And then after that, any always they are, when they have new gadget out, according to the ICTU protocol, and then you change them. So now, yes, you buy them in dollars, because even most of the world is now being run in dollars. But what are we saying? What are you paying for? We are telling them that we have to have a best practice from all the countries that have been increased. I called my friend, luckily I've been working, I worked at in the NASCOM, so I, when I was there, I made friends all around. I called my friends at Nigeria, they told me, yes, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the telecom operators came, they said we must increase it, and we attempted uh, by 40% and the people came upon us and we have re drastically reduced it. We have come back to where we were. I, I uh, did also to England, the same thing. I did, uh, England have not increased it. America have not included, uh, increased it. Ghana have not increased it. Liberia have not increased it. So I said, why are we increasing? And I want to inform you that in those countries, you pay once a month, once a month, if you pay $5, not more than ten dollars if you pay that you use it for the rest of the month in those country to call africa to africa is a free call when you cross call then you pay in those country when you pay this money you have free internet connectivity in those country it goes with other benefits in sierra leone and this part of africa especially sierra leone guinea and liberia what happens is that when you pay you pay for you pay as you use. And we know that what we are communicating with is just the mere air. So Sano, do you have Mr. Sano Joseph, do you still do you have your own empirical evidence to show that these mobile operators are not running at loss? Of course, be, I can categorically say they are not running at loss. And I'll tell you my facts. Yeah. I, I will tell you why. Mm. But there was time I will tell you areas that the mobile company are spending money. Mm. The first area that we were part of those that changed it. I am a living testimony that changed it was during when we were import, ex importing scratch cards. At that time, I was head of cell cell customer care. The headache was on me. And at that time, when we bring it, we have over scratch. We sat down together, we went to other countries and decided that we should start using online credits, electronic credit. And we stop. It saved us the cost of ordering for uh, for, 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 for scratch card, shipping them out. That drastically minimized the cost on us. The other cost, you understand, that was have been minimized on us is the mobile money. When I started it, luckily I was part of it again. I was part of Zap. I was directly the monitor of Zap. We used to call it ZAP. It is not um, money, it's not cell cell money, it is not orange money. So I know it. And by the way, let me tell you something. When you see the, the in terms of the, the the other area where there is big spending right now is in terms of uh, in, in the towers, the max yeah, letting them on. When you are in an area where there is no electricity, you have to have two generators there. You have to ensure that when one goes down. You use one for certain period and leave one for certain period and there should be petrol in that areas, right? 
That is the area of course staff, staff staffing because things go up. But I tell you from what if we can work the radius, we can calculate the the amount of uh, profits that these companies are making just within this perimeter, right? I can tell you within an hour within this perimeter. You understand eh? The companies will be able to make a hundred thousand dollars in courts, in courts. And why are they making it? And how do you make profits? You make profits by the minute of usage. You make profits, people will want to, you how minutes of usage, how people use your phone. And then the other thing that is core, when we were in the telecom industry, we don't we, we, we decided that oh for people to use our product and service, let us create innovative product and services. But that but that's something they've been doing. Now, now, now. So that is how we expect our suggestion to them we know it is tough time but we have not seen a precedent by all the countries doing this we are saying the people are suffering we are saying the only benefits we are enjoying today in the world not only in sierra leone is our internet and our call now so, um, joseph um, not, um the national telecommunication authority has been asked by these companies um to see how they could review uh, now the box stops us national telecommunications authorities desk uh, what do you so i talked to the commissioners mm -hmm. they are not aware about this uh, they are not aware about yes yeah, the commissioners sorry can i, can uh, I i'm coming please I'll, I'll, you have your own time he's peddling misinformation no wait, 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 wait i'm talking i'm eye. talking <laughs> when i'm done you can correct me that day i will not i talked to them when we came from there i raised it up they said but that has not come to our table yet say but maybe they will bring it to us right Okay, then the other thing is that I am talking to them, the commissioners and the director general. If you were in that would you have would you have held this kind of your holding now? Of course, that is one of the reasons why I was very unsuccessful at Natcom. They know me, they said I have because I they said I have opposite views. What I am saying, can they please allow for time's sake until the world is uh, can they please give us this is not the right time this is the time we are suffering from food our youth our children our women are suffering the only means of communication we have the only thing that we are enjoying now as he said everything has gone up the only thing we are enjoying now is the communication and you want to lift that one up high but they you, are running business you expect them to and i tell you them. i am i i am i am part of the business I am in, from that setup, and I can tell no, you. No, you left. You left that setup. I am a decade or so. Ago. No, no, not a decade. No. So, so, so what I want to say, mm -hmm. even if the the two things I I was suggesting, right, today, sir, two things I was before, suggesting before we today. Break. Can we talk to? We are negotiating. We are lobbying with the government to see that the taxes they are paying, if it is so much, let them minimize it. Now how do you want government to make no, money wait, as well? We are not saying they should stop it. Mm -hmm. Minimize it. You understand? So that the government and them can share it. So that for the people, we don't want a scenario where the people continue to suffer, and then why the telecoms are making profit. Okay. So we are saying government John, John and them okay. for have a dialogue. Have a shot before you go for me. I am not surprised at the clear -led form of argument he's put forward. It's been very empty and rambling. You call them clear legged Yes. <laughs> it's been very empty and rambling. Um, he he walked into a web that he created by himself when he started to say that uh, with the first statement he made that he has no empirical data to substantiate his claim of the companies uh, making or not making profits. He walked into that web. He said it, and at the at the second bite, he said he can prove it. He cannot. Stop. That. Don't 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 be misleading people that way. Now he he also said that CSOs were opposed to it. There is a communique that was signed. There are sign so there are. We, I don't want to get. I don't want to get to that point where it would be um, an argument. I'm making a case for tariff normalization. I'd also like to mention that he said that he has a master's in telecommunications management, and for for him to have said that we sell ordinary air is is fully and and not coming from someone who claims to have knowledge and a master's in telecommunications management because 
the cost of providing or generating that air that he claims he, is what he doesn't understand. That cost includes human and material. And he mentioned, based on his argument, that if you go to a place where you don't have electricity, you don't have EDSA, you have to run two generators. That is his claim. So that means he is saying something and doesn't clearly understand what he is trying to put forward. That's, that's completely out of the way. What we are basically asking for, I don't want to get to that point where we, we have to go back to to unscrew, untie, or dismantle so like his argument. You it's, guys it's, presented your figures, for example, to say, this is what we are so this, losing this, every month. These figures are presented. This, these figures are presented. National Revenue Authority can mention that. I'd also like to mention that Sanor is making, making loads of claims of, of the things he did when he was at, at previously, I think, Cell, Cell Tell then. I'm, I'm going to ask that you stop referencing that. Because your exit from the telecommunications industry has been nothing but 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 ignoble. So I'd ask that you kindly don't 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 get to if the you to want get, us don't to get to attack that. each other. No, no, no. I'm very good at attacking. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. 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 I'm no, you, we are you whipping, should make a case. We are, we are whipping, we're having emotions. I'm making a case that as far as we are concerned, it's 300%. Since 2017, it's 300% increase. We are stunted. The tariff cost is stunted. Everything else has corresponding effect when, it, when the, the price of fuel increases, ask me you. It has corresponding effect on everything, our operations. I mentioned, I gave you a basic, basic, in 2017, if you spend 6,000 on whatever fuel you're, you're buying, let's say we are buying at 10,000 because you buy bulk, that was round about to, uh, you're buying 250 liter. That's a lot of money. Now, it's gone up to 18,000. It's over 6 million that you spent on something that you would spend less than 3 million on in the past year. Okay, so that's a lot of money being, being, being spent on it. So we are basically Polyga, asking let's go for, for a review. A, let's go for a short break. The program is a podium coming to you from Freetown. We are going for a short break after the break. We are back with the program Podium, which is coming to you live from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. Well, if you are just joining us, remember we started uh, with um, the uh, budgets that was presented by the Minister of Finance and members of Parliament have just ended the debates um, that saw um, the ruling party holding its ground and the opposition party also holding its own ground, which is normally a tradition when debates, when um, budgets are normally debated. We have now been joined by Honorable Umfa Kuruma, who is representing the Oedipus Congress. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Okay. Your party held your ground that as far as you are concerned as a party, uh, the budget does not speak to the realities on the ground. Uh, but how did your party reach to that conclusion? I mean, for us, of course, the signs are tell, telling, they're all over. Um, we, we already spoke on the fact that cost of living have increased. You cannot campaign on cost of living. You cannot even run a propaganda machine on the cost of living. The people of this country can see and they can tell. Um, this is a government that campaign on bread and butter issues. And like I said, bread has not been given, no butter has been given to the people of this country. We see expenditure increasing, um, especially in education, but human capital index is not telling the story. Um, in 2017, human capital index worldwide said we were at 0 0.35. Two years later, we are still at 0 0.36. So it has not moved a notch. And the budget talks about providing for the vulnerable population. I believe based on government policies, the vulnerability of the society have increased. We have more people in that vulnerable gap or in that vulnerable window than we used to have in 2018. So for us, of course, the circumstances have changed. The dynamics have also changed. Things are not the way they are now compared to the way they were 2016, 2017, and 2015. For the rest of the world. I mean, when the Prime Minister of Malaysia was asked, what does he think uh, COVID will do to his country in terms of his fiscal uh, policies and the drivers of inflation, which are food and fuel. He said um, he doesn't think COVID will affect his nation. 
Why did he have that confidence? The confidence stems from the fact that he believes he has prepared his nation for an eventuality. So do you also, do, um, are you expecting our own government to also make such a boisterous statement? Absolutely, if they were prepared, mm. but they are not. Prepared so, for what? Prepared for any eventuality. Mm. But COVID, sure. COVID, COVID, COVID is not something that any government had prepared that's, for. That's what I'm saying. So if you're prepared for the unfit foreseen, mm -hmm then you make your policies based on those unforeseen. But COVID has not shut down the country. Even with COVID, things are moving in the country. They are moving, but we're saying that the economy is bad because of COVID. We're saying the economy is bad because of the war in Ukraine. But we are saying the economy is not bad because of those reasons. We're saying government expenditures have increased because governments have become bigger. Governments, uh, governments have created more ministries that are duplicating their efforts. So if you go into the Ministry of Education, before we have a Ministry of Education, of course we had a minister in charge of um, junior secondary schools, we had a minister in charge of tertiary institutions, Well, now we have a government that created a new ministry. But there was ministries. a compelling reason for the Minister of Education to be dissected, to be separated, the Minister of Higher Education and the Ministry, sorry, the, yeah, the Minister of Higher and Ministry of, of Basic Education. There was a compelling reason for that to have been done. Everything is compelling. Every reason that projected will be compelling. Do you want to tell me that the government before now, the APC government did not manage the, the tertiary and the, the, the primary uh, institutions? Uh, well, education was not a flagship of the then APC government. Uh, education is now a flagship of President Bill's government. So where education becomes his, his flagship program, he has to put more strength more finance, more energy, and more personnel in that. And I'm sure that's the vision and thinking the president had when he separated free quality, the Ministry of Education. Free quality education was a priority of the foreman. Uh, free quality health was a priority of free the former. Free health care. Yes, mm -hmm. was a priority of the former government. Mm -hmm. But they did, not, they did not create two institutions. Free quality education, yes, under this government is a flagship project. But under the previous government, most of the things that were spent on education, especially tertiary education, where students had 75% of scholarship in tertiary education. If you ask anybody, tertiary education is more expensive than primary and secondary education. And families are spending as much under this program by this government. So you think the 22% of the budget on education is, is, is not something that the government should have done? I'm not saying it's not, but if you even look at the budget, when you go to the budget, um, um, the schedules, you see clearly that the 22% is actually bloated. The 22% is not all on expenditure. Most of it is on wages and salaries. You have something called discretionary spending in budgets. And wages and salaries are not on the discretionary spending. So the budget is cooked up in a manner that is, it portrays the government spending 22% which the government before now... Do you think that's fictitious? <coughs> well, if you add all of them and put them in one, in one pocket, mm. then it becomes 22%. Mm. So, I mean, it depends. If you change the, the dynamics or you change the explanation, it's going to be fictitious, but it's not the way business was done before when it comes to budgeting in specific ministries. Mm. So if you ask the expert, they will tell you that wages and salaries should not be part of the... the, the because those are recurrent expenditures. They're going to be there. Okay. And uh, of course, we want to believe that employing more teachers or getting more people to teachers is good. But you have societies in this country that have not seen quality education. Perfect example if you go to my, my Tasso Island. Perfect example. They, they, they don't even know what quality education is. We still have children sitting on the floor. And this is a government that has spent 4.410 billion loans since 2018 on expenditures in education. So if communities in this country still are grappling with those challenges, then my constituent with Tasso Island will, will ask, what are you talking about free quality education? I don't know anything about it because okay. I'm not uh, experiencing it. Uh, Honorable, uh, uh, are you not giving a pat on the government's back as a result of the prevailing conditions in the world now? This morning also I was listening to BBC also and it was reported that Zimbabwe has the highest food inflation in Africa. In other countries we've seen wave of demonstrations as a result of inflation and stuff like that. But um, the Honourable just now in your absence did argue that in Sierra Leone commodities are expensive but they are available. 
Availability is one thing, and affordability is another thing. <coughs> I mean, if I go into a supermarket and I want to buy a bottle of water, but I cannot afford it. If I go to a store next door and I want to buy, have, buy a bag of rice, or half a bag of rice for that matter, but I cannot afford it. So it's there, but I cannot get it. So you can explain, you can tell me a story about being affordable. But if it's not, if it's not uh, attainable, then for me, the availability does not mean anything for Okay, uh, Honorable, let me come to you again. Um, honorable, um, Selo, you had your colleague here speak holes on the free education, for example, even the 22% that the government says it is expending on, on education. He said uh, that's a bloated figure because majority, or well, not majority, but he said a huge chunk of that 20% goes to wages and salaries, which these are recurrent expenditures. According to him, they should not have been included in the when you say you are pumping that in the education sector and he made some comparison what he spent and the quality that the country had and uh, what we are seeing now how would you respond to that um before i respond i respond to those um, to the questions he posed to me mm -hmm. let me just take him to the human development index he was talking about i will now bring him to 2016 mm -hmm. when his government was um in power yeah um let's uh, let's start the, the indicators we look at uh, probability of survived to age 5.89 look at the harmonized test scores we we'll, let's go to uh, survive survive to age 5 yeah when you look at boys 0 0.36 0 0.37 overall is 3, 0 0.36 0 0.36 overall 2016 yeah so I don't want to talk about the human development index because um, uh, it just he just brought in that so i want to have we jumped uh, no 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 he, 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 him. yes i've just i'm just i'm just uh, um i'm just making a clarification on that um my brother sitting here is a is a, is a colleague is a brother but with uh, with with all respect this is not his domain so probably he he, he said expert so that has, that qualifies uh, that that's not his domain because when you say expert um, you you have to refer to to some of us uh, on this on the subject matter yeah he he's a medical man so uh, when you talk about budget budget, budget, budget 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 staff costs office running costs all of these put into that but the the thing is that that particular cost should not overweigh the direct program cost and what we've done here if you look at this our direct program cost is over 75 percent as of the administrative cost in education um if i take you to the annex um under <coughs> the, the budget profile when you go to the annex 7a you look at um, Roman figure 18 21 percent of 22 percent of the of the total budget goes to education mm -hmm. if you look at this it will tell you clearly how it works it have votes we have the vote heads here yeah so when he's talking about that I just want to make it very clear that that's not the case and um, he's talking about his constituency Tasso Island um, Tasso Island I I know, and all of us here know that Tasso Island did not just come up in four years' time. Tasso Island has been there since decade. So, if as a honorable member, and Tasso Island is considered to be uh, his party stronghold, and they don't have a school up to now, then it's a shame on the on the on the on the past regime. But however, we we are we are noting that on we are noting that, and uh, we we'll talk we we'll discuss that at some quarters. Tasso is not far from Fitzgerald. Yeah, uh, if if, if Tasso Island is place where kids it, sit on the floor, it, uh, that's, that's and education is a he has, priority. He hasn't got, he hasn't proved he hasn't, he hasn't presented any proof here. You know, oppositions are good so at you that. Take, so you take a statement with a pinch of salt. I am not taking it. I'm, I said noted. And I will refer that to the appropriate authority to see how we can salvage that because for us it's a, it's something it's very close to our hearts. We need to ensure that we give quality service, quality education to our children in this country. If he's now complaining that uh, Tasso Island, the children are sitting on the floor uh, after 11 years, they ravage this country. They cannot even put a building there or provide furniture for the children. Then it's it's something we have to we have to go and get that those people uh, to the committed to this government and ensure that we take them up, up after that that pit 
because they are in a pit right now. You guys are not you no, 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 for no, no, so. that, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's uh, I want to thank him for bringing that to our notice, and I'm taking that to the minister. I'm picking that up with the minister, and I'm ensure that uh, I follow up that so that a team visit. We'll, we'll have a video we'll share with you in the event the honourable member is not giving us correct information. Then we'll bring him to book again for for the public. Share pictures. Uh, with uh, you. For, for the public. Before the end of the I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what has been his contribution because for me, for me as an MP, I will not see my constituent sitting on the floor without taking it to the to the appropriate authorities or without even uh, stepping in as a member of parliament to provide at least 40 benches for them but if you are seeing that here you are you are you are shooting yourself now president my honorable member no, I, 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 I would I, I took i take note of that but he didn't say no, he no, hasn't no, done anything no no, no 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 he's as he has he speaks listen so as he speaks he, no no listen you can you, you can play you can you can you can you can, you can uh, uh, replay we are we are live he said as i speak children in my constituency sit on the floor in Tasso island absolutely so I'm not I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just quoting it's unfortunate, I'm, no, it's unfortunate I, I have a, am I protected sir yes, because I'm, presently yes, presently you are just coming in and then you have to wait I mean yeah when I speak you have to listen sir you have to speak this because I'm talking I'm talking about facts and yeah so uh talking about 22 percent that's huge for the national uh you see for us as a government we want to empower people when people are enlightened they they will stand up to challenges to to ask questions they will stand up you cannot you cannot just rule people in an in an elite like universities when you go university politics you cannot you can't you elites. elite so you don't just talk to them you don't just but there are, there's a group of uh political parties country that doesn't want to take people out of that point i want to take people from that point to a, a to, to the line where they can know their rights responsibilities and the how to how people should govern them that's just what we are doing which government doesn't want to see people i'm just people. saying i'm just saying our government wants to see that if any government doesn't want to see that that's their own uh, cup of tea now i'm we, asking you which government we, doesn't want to see it well government. probably my brother's past <laughs> past government didn't want to see that i want to see people enlightened and to challenge critical so issues so you think well, okay before i come to him we don't have much do you think the, but this budget would, would make a much difference come 2023 in the lives of Sierra Leoneans? uh um take for example if you talk to some civil servant they will say the budget is good on paper some MDAs will only receive uh, what they are supposed to receive in the first quarter and the third quarter. My brother, and how do you want, how do you think those <coughs> institutions, those MDAs will? My brother, this money is not is not is not in the vault to go and pick tomorrow morning to come and disburse. Yeah, budgets budgets are mere proposals. What we are not doing as a government is how to generate these funds, how to generate resources, and it's not a responsibility of SLPP alone. It's a responsibility of all of us. All when I say all of us, the the opposition. We as but we are as a government party to ensure that we generate enough resources so that we can able to um actualize these but plan okay. but let me, but no before before Time, we, no before you go before you go few seconds. I, I was i was talking about mitigation mitigation uh, strategies mm -hmm. the, the 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 pandemic is not something that we have control over these are natural disasters we have control over but what we have control over is the mitigation strategies how we how we are manage how we are able to manage this situation that is the responsibility of the government he, he, when the Ebola struck, and that is when what he was referring to that that's uh, your 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 response mechanism has not been robust. Can you can you compare our response mechanism that uh, our president was taking as an example in the at at world world uh, 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 conferences in, uh, across the globe as an example for managing the COVID? Can you compare uh, COVID that is, that has ravaged the entire world, even the US, the big and coming uh, uh, with that to that of a uh, uh, an, uh, an a disease that just um just within the sub-region guinea liberia and ivory coast that uh, led us to austerity can you compare the management of that and this of the management that has okay okay let me come to you you have to compare you have to compare we don't we don't we don't have much time we will not we will not declare austerity honorable believes that this budget come 2023 the lives of people are going to be better than they are now it's unfortunate um first of all it's unfortunate that it will uh, shift the blame of a government to an individual member of parliament that advocates for its people. He knows the rules of a member of parliament. Make laws, represent your people, and oversight. So when members of parliament go to communities and, and solve problems for their constituents, they're doing it because it is not because it's a responsibility. They're doing it because they love their people. That's what I'm saying. So secondly, this is a government that campaigned on bad policies by the previous government. Unfortunately, four years and a half. That's why you are making your point because time has already cut us. Absolutely. Let's so we are talking about a government that campaigned on bad policies. Four years later and a half, 
they still blaming on the previous government. Expenditures have increased against the GDP from 21.3% to 25.1%. <coughs> and expenditure is projected to increase by the end of this year to 28.1%. And by 2023, it will be about 22.3%. We have a government that is using 58% of, of, of revenues mobilized on wage bills. Governments have, as individuals, governments also have cost implications. This wage bill inc includes teachers, nurses, and other new plus all the jobs ministries, that have been created. Plus all the ministries that have been created. We have EPA, and now we have Ministry of Environment. We have Ministry of Social Welfare, now we have a, a Ministry of Gender and Children Affairs. So if you have a post, you should know how, how you should spend the money. That you have so finally, how, how do you, how, I mean, what do you think this budget will do to the people 2022? Well, the Honorable uh, from Bombali called this budget Operation Pay Yourself. It's a budget where government is spending money on areas that they don't need to be spending okay. money. So it's a, it's a budget that is not prudent. So Thank of course, it's much. a budget that have led to the cost of living implications that we experience here as a country. Fuel prices have gone up, the price of food is unaffordable, and Thank you very much, Joseph Sano. I will give you a few seconds. We yeah. don't have, we don't, we don't I have am much time. Appealing. I am now, appealing. when NATCOM receives the proposal um, from these um, RNOs, what do you think NATCOM should do? Well, what I want the leadership of NATCOM to do is to um, call NRA, because NRA was not there. Mm -hmm. So call NRA and have a dialogue with these guys and see what is feasible. Please, I'm begging. I'm begging the president, shift this burden from the suffering masses. And I tell you for true, if you look at the past uh, agreement we signed, there was things that, that they did not do. And they, they said it was a conditional increment. And they said they will improve their quality of service within 120 days. And Patrick said if they do not do it, they, must re, they will reverse back, they reverse to uh, four, 410 million from 650 million to 410 million, they will reverse. They did not what do that. What are you talking about? The, 20, the, the 23rd of March 2017, and always these people will wait when people are why suffering. Didn't you, why, why didn't you raise it? Why are you only raising it now? Well, I raised at, at that time. You, you notice I was all over the media bringing it. I am talking to them. I'm not thank against you, you guys. Much, I am thank saying you, our Joseph. people are suffering. Joseph, Let's thank give you them very chance. much. Um, John Conter, before so, we go. Um, yeah, it's, uh, unfortunately, we don't have time. I would have loved yeah. to... Um, to mention that there are KPIs that were indicated as far as the 2017 um, um, uh, communique uh, most concerned. He could go check those KPIs. They were above satisfactory, exceptional. The uh, committee right. was no form. Sano, hold on. We should have had a committee comprises of all civil society. Joseph, it was no Joseph, you value your bites. Okay. You have, to, you, have to, you have to be a lot more respectful when we are sharing a platform Thank like you. this. Um, so what we're asking for is to have a normalization of the tariff. Um, everything else, everything else is skyrocketed. The only thing that has remained stunted is the tariff. We're, all we're asking for is a normalization. You don't want your Sierra Leonean brothers to be out of job. You don't want to do that. Are people going to be out of job if you're not allowed to increase? I, well, I'm not. Obviously, man, big businesses would have, to, would have to roll out strategies to manage, manage costs. There are things that they have to do. Already I mentioned CSRs, you have to cut down on CSRs. A lot of where we give back to the community from what we make from the country's operations we are in. So, I mean, you don't want to get to that point where, you know, and, and imagine the multiplier effect that would come from, from just the, the, the man like me losing my, my job. My producer is asking me to go now. Thank you very much. You I wish we had more time. Well, um, that's how we end this edition of uh, the podium. Thanks to all my guests, uh, Honorable M. Mustafa M. Selu of the Selu People's Party and Honorable uh, Dr. Umfa Koma from Job People's Congress, John Conte from Africa, and Joseph Sano. On behalf of all of us, and my producer, Samata Bayavinia, who's asking you back. Till we join you again tomorrow, God bless you. Goodbye.